Hey, what's up? It's Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of CreditRepairShop.com. I got some good information, great information for you today. I uh, got my notes, so I'm going to be referring to them. What happened yesterday is I had a client that sent an email to the office, to customer service, and they were like distraught. They had followed everything that we said to do. Credit was so-so, but they were trying to get a house and they followed all of the steps to get that house. And then she didn't get approved for the house and she was like, I'm talking about distraught, like, like very distraught, a long email. And I directed my customer service uh, team. I said, you gotta get her on the phone and we gotta ask her some questions about what had happened to uh, not allow her to get approved because it's usually something that the person is not even thinking about. Like when a person gets turned down for something, really the, the things that come to the person's mind is the stuff that's already in their own, own things that they own reasons why they've been turned down before in the past. And that's what anything, if you get turned down in a relationship, it's, you think it's because of what happened in the past. If you don't get a car that you want, you think that it's something that happened in the past. When, yes, some things do come together because of habits, which I'm going to be talking about later, but there are certain things that people just do not know and understand about lending. And it's the reason why they don't go into too much detail about it is because people's attention span is very short. And also, they're not in the business of educating you on how to get approved for a loan. They're in the business of getting the loan signed so they can get paid and so the company can be happy saying that they did their job. And so it's like this. It's like a line. You're next, next, approve, disapprove, approve, disapprove. You rarely run into any uh, mortgage providers, real estate agents, lenders, whoever, that will actually sit down and say, you know, you need to do this, 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 and this. I always tell people when you're going for loans and you, you first, you need to know the criteria of what do I need to do to get approved? Look at what your situation is. And then when you go through the process, if you don't get approved, you need to ask them. Like, it, I, sometimes I think it's crazy, but I, I understand it. When a person gets denied, for, and we're going to use this example because that's what I'm going to use for the board here. When a person gets denied for a loan on a mortgage, a mortgage for the house, why would they come to us first, not instead of talking to the mortgage company and saying, why didn't you approve me? And the reason why is because we're the ones that help and they know that they don't want to help them. They, they know it um, subconsciously that they don't care about them. So they don't go to them. They come back to us to ask the questions. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out the things that mortgage companies look for. And I know this because I've bought several homes. I own my home that I'm in now. And I had went through the mortgage process almost more than 20 years ago in the house that I'm in now. Uh, I've seen my clients and I've seen them get houses and I know exactly what you gotta go through. And stay tuned, watch this video and then I'm gonna go into other reasons why you don't, uh, you're not successful with getting the stuff that you want and you, this is gonna blow your mind when I show this to you. So you're gonna want to watch this, what I'm about to show you about getting approved for a mortgage. And then I want you to watch uh, when I get into how to get what you want and how to get that credit score that you want and get it, whatever you want from your credit. There's some things that you're doing that you're not, don't, you don't even understand. You don't even understand. So first, first, let's talk about, so this is for a mortgage. You want to get approved. So the first thing that everybody starts to worry about for getting their mortgage is that they're like, hey, uh, I got to get um, 
uh, a credit score. I uh, I gotta, you know, have a high score. Like most people, really only think about that. And I hope this glare doesn't uh, mess this up here. I'm gonna push this back some. I don't want that to mess that up. Um, so, what most people focus on is they focus on the, the credit score. But I'm gonna tell you, it's more than just the credit score. And don't worry if we can't see it right there. I'm gonna move that again. I'm just trying to work on my lighting. So the first thing is with mortgage companies, the one that I've seen, most of them want to have a score of 650 plus on all three. That's like the baseline, 650 on all three that's what they want you to have. All three reports, Experian, TransUnion, Equifax. Next thing that they're going to start to do, and they're going to do this. The mortgage person is going to do this, but there's someone else that's going to do it. And this is where I think a lot of people get upset because they're like, you've done this, but now someone else is going to do it and we ended up getting denied. The next thing they're going to do is they're going to do a debt to income ratio what that is is they want to see if you could afford the house in the past before 2008 what they would do is they would just go off of scores and then they would look at your income but they were allowing people to state their their income now what they're doing is they want to know that you your income listen to the word i'm saying they want the the person the mortgage person wants to know your income and then they're going to do like a little bit of a ratio on your debt to income but remember what i said this person here is the one that really sometimes causes all the disappointment and i'm just going to move this uh like this way maybe so a lot of the issues that people have i'm gonna i'm gonna turn that off a lot of the issues that people have come from when they get upset with dealing with that mortgage person that did not go into more detail about that. So the ne next thing is they want to know about down payment. Now, they're, they're going to ask you, that they, they may not go in all these orders, they're going to just say this is what you need. So it's going to be 3 to 10% down and there's some no money down programs. There's some programs that have it where, uh, you know, where you can have zero down. But I'm just going off of basically, and those are like first time home buyer type programs. And uh, but it's going to usually be three to ten percent down. They want to know if you had that before they even go uh, into the other stuff. And then now, so now that you have that, this is the base. This is what the person when you when you make that call. This is the what that person is basically basically going to be looking at to qualify you. And they're going to probably say, well, how much of a house? You know, are you looking to get a $100,000 house, $200,000, $300,000, $400,000, what, what are you trying to get? So this is, this is the up front, the order taker person. This is what they're going to ask you. Now let's go through where all the problems usually start and this is where it started with the young lady that I was talking about. This is the individual that most people don't know about or you've heard the word but you're like, I've already given you all my information. So what it is is the under writer. The underwriter, the underwriting process is where stuff starts to break down. Because what the underwriter is going to do, yeah, you might have a 650 credit score, but what the underwriter is going to start doing, and I really call it like a mini background check. I really call it a mini background check because what they're going to do is they're going to look at your, your Lexus Nexus, Nexus report, 
And that is like doing a background check on you. Yeah, some of the stuff they're not allowed to use in lending against you, but it's like doing a mini background check. And I'm going to tell you the things that they will see. They'll see if you ever filed a bankruptcy, unless you got it removed from there. They're going to see if, you, if you've ever filed a bankruptcy. But they're going to even go steps further than that. They're going to also look at the way that you're living your life on a on not just with the credit, just with are you always in trouble? Are you, um, you know, speeding tickets? It this is this is something that a lot of people just don't know about, and they're like wondering why do they get turned down when everything above the water is good, but then when you go below the water, it's not good. So they're gonna look at the uh lexus next report they're gonna look at if you had any bankrupt they're, they're looking for bankruptcy they're looking for financial information that may not be shown on the credit reports next thing that they're going to do is they're going to uh yeah look for disputed when when someone comes to us to uh, let me get this light here. When someone comes to us and they're trying to buy a house, first thing I ask them is, okay, are you already in the process? Because if you're already in the process, you cannot, you cannot have disputed information on your credit reports. That has to be off. The disputes have to be resolved. If it's an open dispute, they will automatically deny you. And I told people that over and over if you're going to go buy a house you need to start the dispute process months early and then three months down the line if it ends up getting resolved or not or it's just going to be an open but not disputed account then all you just have to leave it alone and you have to go through the underwriting process because they will automatically deny you if they see disputed accounts on there the next thing is they're going to do what I call bill, bill affordability, affordability test. They want to see if you can really afford the house. They're not going to go off the words of the salesperson. They're probably saying the salesperson will try to fit anybody in here because they're trying to make commission. My job my job as the underwriter is I need to find out for sure, can this person really afford this house? And they're going to ask for your expenses. They're going to look at what they can see on the reports. If you got a car, credit cards, loans, student loans, all of that. They're going to add all of that up and they want to see your expenses they're going to say what is the expenses and minus income and they're going to get that number right here and they're going to say if we give them that house can they afford well here we go let's do it this way can they afford the house now, crazy thing about this, they don't just leave it at, you're going to get the house and you're going to be at zero. No, 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 no. That's the problem that they had back in 2008. No, 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 no. They're going to see if you get the house, can you afford the electric? Can you afford the water? Can you afford the tax payments, the insurance? Will you have money left over? Now, they're not going to be crying about how much money you got left over, but they want to see if you get this house, will you be able to afford to continue paying that house? Because if you can't pay your car payment, you can't pay your student loans, you can't pay the water bill, you can't do any of that stuff, they're going to give you a loan, you're going to be in foreclosure the next month. So that's what you have to watch out for and what they ended up doing with the young lady is that she ended up not passing this test. She did not pass that test. So she got very upset and 
after finding out what was going on, cards, credit cards, and, and she, really, she had got stuff really down. But even with that, provable, and they don't go off of stated income anymore. They gonna, what they're going to do is they're going to make you sign, number one, this is what you earn. Number two, you got to sign this form where they're going to get a transcript from the IRS. And then they're going to want to say, okay, he, he said this. And that's another test. Are you lying or are you telling the truth? Because they could have just had you sign and say, okay, go there and see what you're getting. Uh, let's see what you're making, uh, what you're reporting as income. They have to justify that they gave you the loan. They're not doing stated income. So this is all like a test. You know, he said he earned 10000 a month, but on the taxes, it's only 5000 a month. So what's the problem? And how does that look with this underwriter? They have their meetings. They say, well, I, I got problems with this, 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 and this. And they may have a filter that say, well, if you've got these problems, just deny the person. And then let's talk about some of the other filters that they have. These are things that people just don't know. They don't know and understand. And I think it's because, well, I already told you why I think it is. It's because people, uh, they just believe that it's just the surface part. They're not looking underneath. There's filters. Have you ever filled out an application and it asks you the question, did you graduate college or some college? Do you own a home? How long have you lived at your residence? Have you lived there one year? Have you lived there two years or more? Are you married? Single, children, why do they care to know this information on your application? Why do they even care about it? Because it's a filter. And each lender, each lender gets to put their requirements for what they would allow an individual or how they would like to make their loans. They put their criteria in place. So they may say, people who have college or some college or high school graduates, we don't really care too much about that, but what happens is that we give them a lower rate, lower percentage rate. Get them something for that. Do you own a home? Let's get them something for that. Uh, how long have you lived there? Let's give them something for that. Let's give them a check mark on the approval uh, parts of the application. Married or single? Married? Let's get them uh, a check for that for the lower interest rate. Single uh, shows, you know, there might be some some things going on. They single, divorce, or just single? Uh, maybe we go a higher. Let's go a little bit higher. Why? Because, you know, we just think that they're not settled down. Just this uh, preconceived notion of, of, of stuff. And again, this works with where your scores are. What I'm doing is I'm adding in to uh, talking about the filters on what they could do to adjust interest rates and also deny loans. Children, married with children, single. Okay, married with children, show stability. Single. Let's go higher interest rate. Because what their job is to do is to figure out the risk of people. What is the risk? If we give them the money, what is the risk of us not getting this money back? And you can see this makes sense to you. This makes sense to you. If you're a lender, you, you could still give the loans. Obviously, there's subprime lenders and uh, lenders that will loan people money. But you can see how they can justify 
those differences. And believe it or not, they even go into where you live, zip codes and all that stuff. So now, that's what you have to worry about. Well, I don't want to say worry, but you need to be aware of. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm making you aware of what you need to, uh, to be able to get approved for a loan. You need to be aware of it. So now, let's get into the training. So let's get into the training. So I'm going to show you how to get whatever you want. I do this for myself, and, and um, I'll say I want something, and I first thing you got to do is you got to make sure you want it. You're never going to get nothing in life if you don't really want it. It just doesn't work that way. If you focus on it and you put the put the mindset towards it, it doesn't even have to be hard work. The mindset towards it and you're willing to do the things that it takes to get to that goal, you will be successful. So what I want you to do, uh, I want you to write this with me because we're going to talk about the easy way to get what you want. The easy way. So now what I want you to do is I want you to make this like a little uh, thing here, like, you know, like al almost like a box. And then we're going to make some lines in here. And then we're going to, right here is you. Where you're at now. This is where you're at. You are here now. And over here is where you want to be. The goals. The ultimate goal. That could be you want to get a house. You want good credit, excellent credit. You want a car. You want more money. You want to start a business. It could be any of those things. That that's You want to get right there. That's where you want to get, and this light is messing it up again. So you want to get over here where you want to be. So now, all of these here, let me tell you, this is this is like, you know, if you're watching this, you're about to learn something that I implement on a daily basis. And I admit some of the times I have to kind of readjust myself with this because it, uh, you know, sometimes you can, you know, get in, into a habit of, you know, overstepping and skipping and making it harder for yourself. And that's what this is all about. It's about habits. These are habits. All of these here are habits. The problem isn't that you can't get here. You see other people that have all of that stuff. You see other people that accomplish goals. We all see that. But what the problem is, is number one, we have an issue without identifying where we are. Uh, when it comes to credit repair, this is one of the things that a lot of people are afraid to do because when they do this, some of the times they could get depressed because they're like, my situation, I just can't get over there. Because what they do is they start to visualize a mountain. And really, they're right here. And they know that they're going to have to go up like this. And then it's going to get easy. And all of this stuff here is obstacles. And the problem is those obstacles are habits that you have. All of those habits. So if you're trying to buy a house... Well, one habit is you, a lot of people say, I don't have the money to buy a house. You have the money to buy a house. You may not have the amount of money to buy a certain uh, uh, expensive house or a more expensive house, but you have the money to buy a house. If you're paying rent, you have the money to buy a house. But what you don't have is you don't have the good habits to get you to that house. You're spending your money 
You're not saving your money. You're not doing the things to get to that house. What usually happens, a person who's trying to get a house, they wake up, wife says, I'm tired of renting. You need to help. We need to get into a house. We need to get into a house. I'm tired of landlord. I'm tired of dealing with them. I want to be able to paint the rooms when I want to paint the room. I want to, the kids to be able to play, and if they tear up something, we fix it, and we don't have to worry about a landlord. I don't want no a landlord knocking on my door anymore. So the first thing they do is they say, okay, we're going to go look at houses, and they look at houses that are too expensive. Rather than knowing where they're at right now, and then they start to write down the habits that they're going to have to break to get there. Okay, so we got to, no, first thing is we're going to have to save up money. So what are we doing right now? That's why it's like a, it's like a trail, like you, you're, you're, this is the mountain, but I just made it going on this, this way, is the first thing is we need to start saving for a down payment. And they're like, we don't even have money. We don't have enough money to even pay our bills. And so what they have to do is they have to say, okay, if we don't have enough money to pay our bills, we're, we're going to need to see where our money is going. And that's the part that a lot of people don't want to do. So where is our money going every month, every day? If you want to get even uh, more granular, where is our money going? Because if we want to save money and we know that you go to work every day, and I go to work, where is all of this money going? And we're making, say they're making together $50,000 a year or more. Where is that $50,000 going? Where is it going? Car payments, credit cards, student loans, daycare, all of that. Where is it going? And then the next thing you have to do is you have to look at what is necessities and what are we blowing our money on? Because if you don't do that, you're, 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 what you're doing is you're staying in that habit. You're just keeping that habit and you're saying, it's too much for me to do to get over here. Rather than what you should do and what I do is you just say, if this is what I want. I just need to do whatever it takes. If this takes a little bit of time to do, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to worry about how and all of that stuff. I'm just going to write it down. Okay, get rid of this, get rid of that, get rid of that, so we can save the money to hurry up to get over here. That sounds simple, sounds easy. The only thing, it is easy, really. The only thing is that you got to get out of that mental mindset of I can't do it. You got to get rid of that habit of, I can't do it. The next thing is you might say, well, we don't even have the time to look. The time to look, that's like an excuse. You don't want to look because you know you don't have the money. And you also know that you don't want to go up that hill because of all those obstacles. Maybe you... You know, there's other things that you don't uh, that you don't want to even really go into because you know you've been making bad decisions. Those bad decisions could be bad credit. What habits have you been doing that got you to have bad credit? Are you willing to do away with those habits? That's another obstacle that you have to work on these are obstacles and each time they intensify the closer you get over here to what you want these are going to intensify and all it is is your your brain is telling you you don't want to go through all of that you just want to come home sit down the landlord at least he uh or she uh they mow the lawn uh they take care of all the repairs we don't got to worry about that so your, your mind will say, don't try to fix that credit. 
Don't try to take any time to look for nothing. Don't try to take any time to save any money. We don't want to we don't want to get into all of that stuff, right? So let me give you a quick example before I move forward on here. When I uh when when I was 18, really 17 years old, uh I wanted to do real estate. I had saw those real estate commercials back in the 80s. And uh, I was like, I want to be a real estate investor. And I had bought a course and for, and I got the money from my grand, my grandmother. She gave me the money. It was like 500 bucks or no, like $295. That's how much it was, which was a lot back then. She gave me that money. I bought the course. It was a disappointment. But I didn't let that just, I was like, let me just seek out better information and that's another part of it just because things happen here doesn't give you a excuse to quit what it sh what you should do is you should just keep moving forward so what happened is i ended up getting with this uh mexican guy that was very good real estate i saw an ad in the newspaper and um he i sat down he at his office uh i would walk there it wasn't far from where i live and he would hit the tape recorder. He was like, I'm going to record it so you can hear it when you want to go back. He gave him the workbooks, and he just went through with how to buy real estate. He taught me everything about it. I use that information to this day to buy real estate, but at that time, I was not wanting to go up this hill. Number one, I was thinking that I was too young to be buying real estate. I had all these preconceived things. Most of that stuff is because of what your your experiences with your own family, those experiences and the people around you will actually put habits in there that you didn't even really come up with. You just latched on to them because you saw what they were doing and you just, you know, they're living, they're doing this, and you might try to make it better, but really you're just forming habits that, that were just given to you. I, I was the same way. So I went to his office one day and we were supposed to do go down to the uh, courthouse to look at some properties. And I was just, he could see it in my eyes that I was kind of depressed. And he was like, well, what's going on? And I was like, I just, you know, I don't know if I can get this going. And he was like, you just don't worry about it. You just go and do it. He was telling me, you just go and do it. Don't be afraid. If you fail, you fail, but you just get back up and you do it again and you get better each time. The same thing that I'm teaching you here. Well, he said, you know, after a little bit, he was just like, what are you going to do? Join the army. You know, he was joking. He was actually joking to me. Fix that there. He was like, what are you going to do? Join the army? And I was like, uh, I, I already did. I wrote, actually, I didn't tell them, but look, at the age of 17, and they I shipped off the day after, I think, that I turned 18 years old. And I was in there for two years. And so what it is is that I didn't want to break the habits. I had the information. People give us information. There's information all over the place. But I didn't break the habits. I didn't go through what I would have to break to get to those properties, to buy those properties, to make offers on those properties. Now, there's two ways that you can, uh, on ways to break habits. Two ways. Number one, you confront them and you just... Deal with them one by one, which is probably the, it's the hardest way to do it, but it's the one that will probably make more sense to you if you're not in the mode of a universal type thinking person. Universal type thinking person thinks like this, and this is the, the level that I'm on. Ideas and stuff is all over. It's already here. It already exists. All I have to do is pull it down and utilize it and don't put any of my preconceived notions and limitations on top of it. That's simple. But most of you will have to go through that process to do that. And the so the first way 
is to just break it down and say, I got to do this, this, and this, and you're going to have to kind of be uh, intimate with each part because you're not going to be of the universal mindset. The second way, which is part of the universal mindset, is to write down what you want out of your life and you read it every morning and you write it until it becomes automatic. This is something that I did, and I don't, you know, only special people get to see this. You're special. I wrote this, what I wanted for my goals. This was uh, way back. This was uh, in 20, it says here 2010 on here when I wanted to increase my income. And I wrote this over and over and over, and I said I was grateful. I was, uh, you know, I have a part for grateful and I have a part in it for the amount of money I wanted to earn and I wrote that no matter even if I went on trips each one of these is where I wrote it over and over and over I did this for six months straight look at this no matter what I wrote it I wrote it I wrote it for six months straight here it is right here six months straight I wrote it wrote it it became so automatic. Uh, what I had said at that time, I wanted to earn, and just talking about income, but it's more than just income. It's about dealing with people. It's about being able to talk to you right here on YouTube, even though I didn't use the word YouTube. It was about helping more people. But at that time, because income is one of the things that a lot of people base stuff off of. As I said, I wanted to make uh, $48,000 per month. That was my goal at that point. I could tell you there's some months that I do uh, just from one business over $100,000 and with multiple businesses, 200 and uh, I think we've done before like $300,000. And so with, with the group of businesses that, that my wife and I own. So this is... Uh, and what I did there is I just said, this is what I want, and this is what I'm going to focus on. And when things came into my life, people came into my life, I, you know, evaluated them. It does it fit. If it fits, let's do it. If it doesn't fit, that's not in there. Because I, it's easy to not fall into what you don't want if you have written down what you want. I said I wanted to do uh, videos. I, at that time, YouTube wasn't even around. I said I wanted to be able to present myself on uh, some type of T. I said TV because YouTube wasn't there. Look at what I do uh, weekly for you or daily sometimes. I already had this in there. The vehicle came. And when the vehicle came, it presented itself to me and it said, in my mind, it was like, you you said you wanted to do this. Make the videos. You said way back then, before it was even invented, you want to do this. It's here. Are you going to do it? Or are you just going to wait for the next thing? With earning the money, when I earned the money, I was so much into what I was doing for people, what I was doing for my family, doing using my mind, doing the work that I didn't even really get the, I would say the high that you might think that a person would get. Yes, I was excited, but it was more of I became that person. When you do this, see, you're here now. What a lot of people skip is you think that it's about the 50,000, the time, the bad credit, uh, making good, better decisions, uh, finding the, the house, actually finding it and doing the goal. When you get over here, you're not the same person as over here. You, you're not this person anymore. You're a different person. And that's what a lot of people just don't simply understand. So you may not be, if you were able to just jump right over here, yeah, you'd be screaming, jumping, hollering, and all of that. And not to say that you won't do it when you get it. You're going to be happy, but you're not going to be that same person because you're going to be the person that dealt with this habit, dealt with that habit, dealt with that habit, that one, and any other ones that you want to put on here. 
you're going to have finished all of those off and you're going to be here and then you're going to be doing what I had to do, which is reset and make new goals because you got to always be growing. All right, I'm going to finish it off here. If you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Watch video, What Makes Us Different. If you need your credit reports and scores, go to the website, your the number 3 scorescom That's one way that I monetize my time for being here on the channel. Uh, make sure you grab my three uh, set of letters of debt validation, cease and desist collect, uh, collection activities, and the statute of limitations letter. Links are below here. Other services are below here. We help people with court summons responses. Uh, you know, I have my t-shirt down there and my wife made a new design. We're going to be getting those out pretty soon. Uh, just check out the links and make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video. Thank you for your time. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the CreditRepairShop.com.